Welcome to this episode of How to Really Run a City with former Atlanta Mayor Kasim Reed and former Philadelphia Mayor Michael Nutter. I'm Larry Platt of the Philadelphia Citizen, a nonprofit solutions oriented media organization dedicated to defibrillating democracy in the American city where it was born. If you've been with us before, you know we have a lot of fun and we take seriously the strategies and political tips that make cities and citizens flourish. This week, part two of our conversation with Dr. Michael Eric Dyson, best-selling author, university professor, and public intellectual. I hope you're in your Sunday best because Dr. D, a Baptist minister, takes us to church a bit. Among the many topics we talk about, Joe Biden's record on issues important to black voters, and the defense of the rule of law led by local African-American prosecutors like Alvin Bragg in New York. As only Dyson could do, he summons the late soul singer Bobby Womack and lays out his Womack theory of good governance. Before I forget, a shout out to our friends at Comcast and Diversified Search, and a reminder to check out the Good Government Show with Dave Martin. He also drills down on making government work in our everyday lives. You can find The Good Government Show wherever you get your podcasts or right from his website at goodgovernmentshow.com. So without further ado, let's join Mayors Nutter and Reed for part two of Dyson Gone Wild. There's a lot to talk about. I mean, if you want to talk about giving money, what he did directly influence, that is Biden, the president, is if you got student loan forgiveness. I know three or four people alone who've been forgiven 100 grand a piece. That's a lot of dough. And there's a lot more of those people where that came from. So you're absolutely right to get people to see the actual things he's done. The, the black unemployment rate is historically low, better than under Obama, better than under Clinton. So the point is, there's plenty to talk about, but you, as you're right, you got to talk about it and you got to talk about it to the people who make a difference so that they can amplify his message. I sent them Plies's last thing. And I said, yeah. he ain't wrong. Yeah. And, and yeah. they were like, oh, yes, we're going to get on this and we're going to get you out there. I said, me out there, I'm going to get out there. I'm going to do what I got to do. Yeah. But you, like like yeah. the mayor just said, you got to get some of these other folk out here, some of these rappers. I'm glad to see they hooked up with D.L. Hughley. And I know he did an interview with yeah. him. And, you know, show some of that at feisty Joe Biden. You know, the one that right. was at the State yeah. of Union, like, I know you can read. I know you can read. Yeah. I mean, come good. on, right? I know you line. can Kasim Reed. That was a good line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know that you can Kasim Reed. I know you can try to be a Michael mm -hmm. Nutter. So the point is, <laughs> get out here and do your thing. And it, it's it, if we can see that feisty side of him yeah. fighting back, don't take it sitting down. You no. got this dude on the ropes legally, legally. Yeah. He's on the ropes. He's got three of what? Three other cases uh, to go. Now, we know they're not going to go, but you got to hammer that home. The, po the point you were making earlier, uh, Mr. Mayor, about, you know, jabbing him, jabbing him, jabbing him. Like Hillary Clinton could have been standing on like, what are you doing? Are you creepy? We got to repeat. Repetition is critical to black culture for a variety of reasons. Absolutely. First of all, in, in terms of oral culture, when we couldn't, quote, read, when it was forbidden for us to read, we, we gathered information orally. So now the oral distribution of knowledge and transmission of insight is critical here. You got to say it and then say it again. Now, I'm an old Baptist preacher. This is what they say. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them and then tell them tell what, them what you, you told them. Tell them what you tell told them. Again. What we got to do. There you go. It's, we it's, do. The same, it's the same rules. Those are the critical rules of any great speech. Are those are those three elements, and uh, that was the part of the conversation that you you had just come in, Doc, mm -hmm. uh, which is that you know he's going to have to switch up strategies. Uh, I don't know; it may have been uh, may have been um, uh, Rocky II, uh where uh, late in the fight. Uh, yes, uh, right. He switched. Yeah, Carl, yeah, went, Carl Weathers. Yeah, he 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 switched Carl south on it. Uh, was Burton uh, 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 Mickey uh, gave right, him the right. signal or shouted out or whatever, and he switched up on him. And that, I mean, it was you know, I, was, it was a turning point I think no, I think that was Rocky, Rocky Three with Clever Lane. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because Carl right. Weathers <laughs> trained him, Apollo yes. trained him in Rocky Three. Yeah, yes. which yes. is beautiful. So oh, he, he's man. he's got to come out of this thing and pe have people say, "Damn, well, where where's that yeah. guy been?" Right. It's a five right. month. It's five months. It's five rounds. Right. And That's go right. at him every day. He has to make criminal 
selling his intro moniker, right? It's not right. former president. It's convicted felon, Donald Trump. Con right. Every you day, day. convicted every day. felon, Donald Trump, is the intro. Right. Right. Hillary Clinton, felon. she's the former secretary. Joe Biden was the former vice president. He is former. He is convicted felon, Donald Trump. And go Great on point. offense and it's, fight with him every day. Yes. Hey, Dr. Dyson, I need you to help me. My, my soul is troubled about something, and, and uh, I, I need you to help me. I want you to give us some insight on what it says about our country that the only cases involving Donald Trump that have moved, including the one that, that resulted in a felony conviction yesterday, were all brought outside of the federal structure, mm -hmm. right? So, so Letitia James, the Attorney General of New York, outside of the federal structure, a yeah. black woman, Alvin, Alvin Bragg, Bragg mm -hmm. Manhattan District Attorney, his predecessor had that case, right? Outside of the federal structure, yes. Okay. I want, and, and of course, uh, in Atlanta, Fannie Willis has been magnificent and fearless. Daughter of a Black Panther, mm -hmm. right? Brilliant lawyer, her father. Um, speak to that culturally. Well, that's a great point. And the obvious thing that brings all three of those folk together, even though we know the predecessor to Alvin Bragg was not a Black man, these are Black folk. You know, when, when, when we opened up by talking about, or at least when I came in, yet again, Black people will save democracy. Here it is at the judicial level right at the at the at the outside the federal level because the supreme court is flying flags upside down right mm -hmm. and blaming it on their wife not their wife their wife right upside down mm -hmm. oops upside your head it's a gap band and diana ross moment i'm coming out upside down so so they they obviously have been influenced by black culture because <laughs> they got it all turned upside down but the point you're making is brilliant and powerful and poignant that is to say outside of the federal level, the federal judiciary, which should be responsible. We have had to have these cases drawn on the local level. Why is that? A couple of reasons. First of all, it does indicate the extraordinary political genius, let's give him credit, of Donald Trump of stacking the federal bench, of stacking the judiciary, not just the Supreme Court, which he shifted the power balance by right. putting three folk on there, right? So when when, I, when young people tell me, oh, I ain't going to vote, I ain't going to vote, it ain't no difference between them. Even if you believe that hogwash, which is just silly, it's the other stuff. It's the economy, stupid. It's the Supreme Court, stupid. And now you've got a Supreme Court that is about to lessen and ameliorate the conditions to be held for, for the January 6th people, criminals, to be held legally liable. That stuff is going to be relieved significantly once the Supreme Court finishes with it. So the point is, stacking the federal bench, stacking the judiciary with Donald Trump appointees, like the, the female judge who said, uh, you know, in regard to in Florida. the other cases, right, Smith? No, we're not going to put the a Florida gag case. to the president and so on and so forth. So, so the point is, that's number one. Number two, I think that the shift right has been so significant that the middle has moved to the right, right? And, here, you know, here. moderates, Joe Manchin, Kristen Sinema, y'all claim to be moderates and centrists, and now Joe Manchin has made it official. He's leaving, oh, both parties. Bro, as Howard Zinn said, ain't no neutrality on a moving train. And when you are neutral or, in, quote, independent in this era, you are reinforcing the status quo. So the point is that the, the, the far shift right has mandated a kind of federal allergy to taking on cases that are perceived to be political only when those politics seem to favor or at least um, uh, speak to those interests that are, quote, liberal or progressive. So the lockhold, the chokehold, that the far right has on the judiciary is telling here. And thank God for Letitia James and Alvin Bragg and Fawny Willis, because they have been the true ambassadors of a judiciary that is independent of the president, like the Department of Justice is independent of the president. Otherwise, they wouldn't be trying to hold 
uh, young Mr. Biden accountable. So the point is, until we understand that that those factors have occurred, we're going to be in bad shape. But you're right to be uh, heartbroken, distressed, because we should depend upon a judiciary that is independent. The Supreme, even the Supreme Court, under more conservative interests, never had this blatant disregard for precedent, convention, or the integrity of law. And now the way in which, you know, Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito have disparaged that tremendous reputation, choosing to recuse themselves. Samuel Alito yes. says, I will not recuse myself. That was my wife. Clarence financial Thomas conflict. the same thing. But financial that's lack of financial disclosure. The lack of financial disclosure. And Clarence Thomas saying, I don't want to be a, a, a victim of white patronage. Dude, $287,000 or whatever that RV costs, your great grand, your mm -hmm. grand nephew, you getting money like you at in Vegas from some of these billionaires. Mm -hmm. So all of that, I think, is telling. It's distressing. But what we have to do is to reinforce the legitimacy of those offices that Fawny Willis and Letitia James and Alvin Bragg possess and continue to reinforce them until we can shift things back in a far more just uh, tradition. Well, Dr. D, that, that leads to helping, again, uh, younger or older uh, voters. Um, you know, folks, well, it does make it, you know, you started with the, the, with the fallacy uh, argument that someone made. Well, it doesn't really make a difference. Okay. Everything that you just walked through is essentially a result of people thinking that in 2016. That's right. That's right. That's right. I would make the case that I don't think Hillary Clinton, as president, nominates three people for the United States Supreme Court, in right. addition to the seat that got, you know, ultimately was stolen right, uh, right. during the last year of the Obama administration, but notwithstanding that. So, right. you know, the emails, the server, uh, Benghazi, what Bill Clinton was doing or not doing, and her support for her husband, et cetera, et cetera. How important is any of that now when you see all the things that have happened over the course of the last eight years? Hello. And now, so, right, that was that was the argument then. Oh, my God, I don't like her. But what about that hairstyle? You know, oh my can't stand that dress, blah, 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 her voice, all this other nonsense. Yeah. Absolutely. And now we're in it to, well, he's too old. Right, okay. right, right, right. I've seen no photos of President Biden falling asleep anywhere. Oh, Between man. the two of them, he's the only one who can actually button his jacket. <laughs> Every time you see him, he's either Say that again. jogging that somewhere. Good. I'm trying to right. slow him down, right? right? I mean, he's moving. Right? Yes, he is. And is, <laughs> and is talking to world leaders on a regular basis, going to 900 meetings, dealing with uh, the, uh, Ukraine, dealing with uh, 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 the Mideast, East. Um, and all these other world leaders, and no one has ever said a word that this man is not on the top of his game. And so again, this whole well, I mean, we just get distracted by nonsense and these and these illegitimate arguments that make no sense whatsoever. Absolutely. People get no. caught up in it. Right? We're right back at 2016. It's a great my point, mind. and it bears repeating because I hear too much of this, you know, even more so. I re in, in, in at least in 2016, you had riding the wave of a progressive movement and people were, you know, concerned about this, you know, but they were, you know, they were kind of more careful about it. now it's just outright ignorance. Like, I don't care. I'm, I'm hanging out with mm -hmm. Trump because he's going to give me more. And people are like, well, it ain't no different. So I might as well vote for him. You know, that kind of nonsense is indicative of a level of political illiteracy. That is astonishing, first of all, because you don't even understand how your government works. You don't even understand how laws and get it, Yeah. The point you and made these same people though, that are helping it. helping Donald Trump are dismantling diversity and inclusion oh. efforts right in your face. Oh. And they're raising it, they're raising it at a time when all of the data says that your arguments against it are total nonsense. Right. Because right. President Trump has given all of them permission because of his behavior yes. Yes. to say things that would have been unconscionable prior to this man's presidency. Um, and now they can say it, they can say it full-throatedly and dismantle initiatives left and right 
We have a woman named Arian Simone that founded the Fearless Fund, a VC fund where black women bootstrapped and raised $25.8 million. Yeah. And we're, a, we're responsible for a disproportionate number of investments in black women-owned businesses. And they literally have a man who is suing to tell yeah. them they can't invest money. They have no right to support black women entrepreneurs. These are the same people that are trying to put Donald Trump in office. Well, and they're the same people who got affirmative action removed at Harvard. Where was it? Harvard. and Harvard. Har Harvard. Uh, That's correct. And, you know, then North Carolina, all that. So these are the same people, these are the same people with, with a Johnny come lately interest. And can we learn from them? They don't give up. They go from mm -hmm. one issue to the other mm -hmm. to the other, but it's the same theme. But here we are changing up every time. We got a new trend. We got a new fad. No, we're going to hang on to this. Mm -hmm. Stick to the message. Have message discipline. This is about the future of this country. Now, I know we hear it every election. Oh, this is the most important election of our lives. Well, it turns out that it is. And I can't help that the next time. Because there won't be any more elections. <laughs> Come on. Right. This guy's already told you. <laughs> He's on the Mussolini tip. He's on the neo-fascist tip. He's on the he's on the the kind of dictatorial autocratic. He won't be a dictator for a day. I mean, come I mean, on. Who says that? Who says? I mean, that? who's who says that? The who same guy that? who says I can go out here in the middle of the street and get convicted of murder and still, you know, be president. Wouldn't, and still wouldn't be lose, like, wouldn't lose a vote. Never. I mean, wouldn't lose a vote. And so the thing is, is that we got to say to older and younger voters. Vote your interests in the same way. Don't turn out to be voting against your best interests. And let me tell you what, let's bring up the, the elephant in the room. A lot of people, understandably, I'm a college professor. I'm, I'm with these college protesters. I support their right to do what they got to do because that's a tradition that has been valued in this country. But here's my point. If you are upset with Joe Biden because of his distressing and problematic relationship to Israel, think about Bobby Womack. This is a Bobby Womack moment. If you think you lonely now, now. Wait, yeah. until the night. wait until the night. If you think right. that it's bad <laughs> under Joe Biden, wait <laughs> until Trump comes in here. Yes. So it's a two-man game. Look, the finals are coming up. They're set. I hope Dallas wins. I know, I'm sorry. Dallas Versus Boston. Yeah. I know Larry Jack, down, yeah. down. I know Michael Nutter. Mayor took my Nutter, man, Ant-Man out there. Ain't down I'm with no Nutter Boston. That. Okay, but anyway. New York took us down. Okay, so here's the point, though. Here's the point. I, I'm, a, I'm a Lakers fan since I was a kid. I would love you if you ask me who's going to win the finals. Well, I think the Lakers. Dude, the Lakers ain't in it, right? So don't tell me who you. It ain't Jesus and Joe. It's Joe and Donald Trump. And Go that's ahead. who's on the ballot. Say that. And so you got to understand those are the choices. You got to, it's either Dallas or it's Boston. It ain't LA. It ain't Philly. Maybe two years from now, Philly, if you get LeBron James. So the point is <laughs> that, that there's no question that we have to say to people, these are the interests. And it's a Bobby Womack kind of thing. If you think it hurts now, if you think you're upset with what Biden thinks about Israel, what do you do with the man who relocated the capital for America's interest in Israel to Jerusalem, bro? This is a guy who's uncritical, not principled Jewish, you know, defense of the state of Israel, as well as criticism of what the state of Israel has done. That kind of balanced uh, and per perspective that Joe Biden behind the scenes, let's be real, Joe Biden does not dig Netanyahu. They ain't no, they ain't pals. They ain't going to see the challengers together and check out Zendaya. That's not what they're going to do. So the point is, have enough wisdom to say, I'm going to put aside my differences with Joe Biden long enough so I won't cut off my nose to spite my face to be mad at him to send a message. Oh, you sending a message, all right. You're sending a message that you believe the status quo of things uh, is so horrible under Joe Biden that you're not going to go far worse under Donald Trump, and not just on Israel and Palestine and Gaza, but on your bank account, on your light bill, on your water bill, on what's going He's a poor businessman. He gets billionaires. He doesn't uh, look out for poor white people and working class white people. The only thing he has in common 
is a form of xenophobia and bigotry that, that can forge connections between diverse communities. We have got to make this message clear and we got to get out there and tell these young folk and these older folk, please don't be ignorant and illiterate politically speaking when it comes to our best interests and understand the tradition of this is of, of, of voting your conscience. This is why older black people have always understood Joe Biden. You know, when, when younger people said, well, he was against busing. Would name me some white person of his age who wasn't against bus. There were very few of them for it. Go ahead. All right. The secondly, the, the crime bill. The crime bill. I saw black ministers out here going, sign that bill because crack bill. is destroying my family and street and church. So let's <laughs> stop. The black all caucus voted for. Come on, bro. The revisionist history here is astonishing. Has Joe Biden been perfect? No, but he's got a Grace Jones reality. What did Grace Jones say? I might not be perfect, but I'm perfect for you. <laughs> so the thing there is that we got to understand it's all contingent historically. I don't want to get all riled up, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh -oh. Bobby Womack and Grace can Jones. can't be improved they upon. Can, they I love it when he can't they can play and preach and make a play. Bobby Womack and better. Grace Jones can save us. That's what I'm saying, bro. Bobby Womack. Just, that's yeah, yeah. I was just waiting I, I for you. I thought that's where you were going, but but you, you put that pregnant pause on there. I was wondering which one you were gonna pull out. Right. I know, right, I, know right. fair, I know a fair amount. I was of Bobby waiting Womack. for you to bring that's in. Right, a, right. I wish he wouldn't trust me so much. There you go. That's the one. I wish he didn't trust me so much. Yes. I thought it had something to do with crossing 110th Street. I thought that's where you'd go. Uh-oh. Larry's in it. Hey, hey you've yes. been, you been 110th Street lately? <laughs> there you go. Oh, I know, hey. right? I know, right? Hey, I, I that's like going to the city, everybody. That's like going to Brixton in London, baby. They done fixed it up, dog. I took my hey. class. I took my class up to uh, 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 Jeffrey Canada's. Uh, uh, yeah. Harlem Children's Zone. Harlem Children's Zone, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, let us off the bus. They got a couple buildings. We went to the wrong building. We had to walk to the next one. I get to 125th Street. I think it's the intersection of, of like MLK and 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 Malcolm X. Right. Yeah, man. Yeah. They got the biggest Whole Foods store I've ever seen in my life. Bro, bro. They got a nice little hotel up in there next to the Apollo. They rocking, bro. They rocking. So please, people, Bobby Womack, Grace Jones, help us. Two things occurred to me. One is, in, when you guys were talking about age, it occurred to me, and the way Biden is treated, uh, it, it occurred to me that it may just be that ageism is the last uh, acceptable prejudice. Mm -hmm. That that the way we talk about it is is uh, uh, devoid of fact, as you as you pointed out, and and uh, so eloquently. The other thing is, uh, I flash back, uh, Mayor Reed, when you talked about pointed out that the federal judiciary is what's failing us. I flashed back to the 60s and the and when JFK was president and it was the federal intervention that supported uh and and uh uh campaign for exactly. civil rights. They were that so it's almost like we have a reverse oh it is states' it is. rights thing going on now. States rights used to mean be code for uh, uh, prejudice, and now states' rights are the things that are that are protecting the union. That's so why Larry that's... Platt can always come to the cookout. That's why you can come to the cookout, bro. That's right. No, <laughs> no, that it is a reversal of that. I think that's a brilliant point. And think about it. Even though you know Kennedy was tricky, right? JFK, because he be telling those Alabama ju uh, judges down there calling black people the N word. Hey, just hang in there, blah, blah, blah. And he'd be telling, so he's speaking out both sides of his mouth. But your point is really brilliant in the sense that we've had a reversal of fortunes because the federal government, and it's still, look, we need to deploy the federal interests in defense of vulnerable populations locally. But look, we got governors who ain't taking money because they don't want to be down with no progressive liberal scheme. Mm -hmm. And so you're absolutely right. The federal has been replaced by the local and then the local uh, with, you know, Alvin and with uh, Letitia and, uh, you know, with uh, Bonnie. 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 I Bonnie mean, Willis. They, they might as well be the Supremes or at least part of the Temptations or something doing their thing. The reality is, is that it is the state's rights um, of those people, not in the traditional sense, to be sure. But I think it does awaken us to the fact we got to do we got to play both hands at either or we got to continue to hammer away at the infrastructure judicially 
uh, on the federal level that is connected to the executive level, that is connected to the legislative, right? We know this. But at the same time, we got to deal with what the defense gives us. And right now, the defense has given us, we got to have local uh, concerns that are that have been marginalized to a certain degree and attacked every one of them. But they've leveraged the authority of the legal system in defense of vulnerable populations that has held federal authority to account. Because what's astonishing is not simply that he's the first president to become a felon, but that it, it happened as a result of a state law that the dip, that the Republicans usually favor above all else. So I think that's a brilliant point, but we got to play both sides of the street there. Yeah. Well, I, we, we've kept you longer than we promised, uh, Dr. Dyson, but I, I can't wait till you get out oh. there and start making this case, not only to uh, young black voters, but I think your message resonates with white working class voters because because essentially uh what you 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 speak to all poor folk and your writing speaks to all poor folk uh in this country so i i, I can't wait to see you uh out there uh uh on the campaign trail you're planning on doing a lot of that huh oh yeah i'm gonna be out there man because you know i mean i'm i'm gonna try to steal you know, some of my ideas to steal, you know, I'm going to try to steal Mayor Nutter's idea, man. I'm, I'm taking it to the White House immediately. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, and the Thank first you. time I said, I'll say Mayor Nutter said it. The second time I say somebody said. Third time mm -hmm. I say, like I always said, get out <laughs> on the streets. No. <laughs> I love that. I love that. No, it's brilliant. I mean, <laughs> Mayor Nutter, Mayor Reed, Brother Platt, it's always a pleasure to, uh, to have some great conversation with brilliant men like y'all. Thank you so much. For allowing me, we in. enjoyed it. Thank well, you. thanks, thanks, dude. And 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 next time, uh, Let me know I want to come to Philly. Yeah, and, and and next time I want to talk to you about about Dr. King because you wrote you wrote two great books on on Dr. King, and uh, uh, I just finished reading Jonathan Ige's new biography yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of Dr. Yeah. King, and yeah. and um, I think uh, your 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 perspective on you always remind me of the 1968 Dr. King. The one who was called a traitor by the Washington Post, the yeah. one who uh, was suffering depression, the okay. one who uh, was was, you know, because of his opposition to the Vietnam War, the one who was not at, at 30 percent in the polls. And and I, I think that's the, the Dr. King that's been whitewashed. And you always remind me of that. Yes, sir. No, no, no. Thank you for doing it. Ike's book is brilliant. I'm glad it won the Pulitzer Prize. But you're absolutely right. That Dr. King. It, and, and you just made me realize that that's another advantage in this campaign. You know, here's a guy, y'all all love King now, but he was polling real low. I mean, he was no longer mm. among the 10 most admired Americans for the first time in 10 years. No uh, major college, they, they, would, they would let him lecture, but they weren't enthusiastic about it. Nobody wanted to publish a book of his. His own college didn't allow him to come on to the board of trustees until two and a half years before he died. Why? Because the white board of trustee chairman, Mr. Lynch, um, as in Merrill Lynch, right? Or was it Merrill? One of them, Merrill or Lynch, didn't said that King was a poor role model because he went to jail too often. I mean, he wasn't selling crack. He was trying to crack the edifice of white supremacy. So that's another great point. I think we should do a little parallel here. Oh, Joe was down in the polls, so was Martin Luther King Jr. So was the bill, you know, for the great society and so on. The LBJ said we lost the South River, but look at all those people who have risked low poll numbers for the future of democracy. That's another idea I want to take. Thank you all. I'm still on hold. Hey, 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 before we close, I want to make a point, Larry. I want to make a point on this poll stuff. During the last two cycles, the polls have predicted doom for Democrat results. Right. And I think we need to come to grips with the fact that because of the funding behind the Republican structure, that's right. It is influencing poll results in a way that is that that the results show are inaccurate. Right, right. Mm. So um, the polling, whether you look at the New York, the race in Northern New York, where the Democrat won race after race, the polling has been inaccurate. And I think the overall structure, including the Biden polls, if black people were supporting Trump, the way that folks say that black people are supporting Trump, the race would not be two or three points. Right, right. True. 
Great That's point. not possible. Right, right. The math ain't math. So both can't be both can't be true. Right, right. So and, as as we close our program today, I want us to start taking it this on right. because the results versus the polling data over a 24 month period shows that their messaging apparatus is overwhelming. Right. And it also reminds us that these entities where people announce the poll results are increasingly being influenced by business and conservative interests. Great point. Yes, sir. Great point. There you go. Brilliant point. The math ain't mathing. And, you know, it can discourage people. Well, they say he ain't going to win no way, so I ain't even going to go out there. So you can have that. Okay. Or okay. we can turn it into a positive, what Mayor Reed just said, by saying, let's, what they used to say in the church, uh, you know, pr pr pray for the best, but prepare for the worst. So the point mm -hmm. is, let's let's just assume that those folks could be, we're going to work that much harder then. We're going to work go. that much more ferociously to make certain that the truth doesn't come out. Because they they talk to five Negroes. Let's be real. They talk to mm -hmm. six black people and, you know, maybe 20 or 30. And then that is the margin of error. And so I'm being a little bit facetious, but not much. So the point is, is well, that 20 to 30 black people's uh, difference in a poll that only talk to three, 400 people, that's going to give you a skewed number. And I think Mayor Reed is absolutely right. We have to fight to the bitter end. I want Listen. to see somebody get a black person on the telephone. <laughs> I would like to see that. Yeah. I would love to be in the data room. Hey, Louise. Get a black person on the hey, telephone. Louise. Hey, stop. <laughs> no, no. Turn the ribs over. No, right now. <laughs> what you, a pole? I like Poles, Jews, Italians. Look, everybody. I like them all. Stop calling my house. Okay. <laughs> hey, Dr. Dr. Dyson, thank you so much. I can't thank you enough for joining us. Thank you all for having me. See you, man. Take care, Doc. Bye bye. Thank you, uh, man. He's he's awesome. Uh, and and dudes, I felt like I just went to church. I'm calling my house. He's what a, what an, what energy, you know? Ah, yeah. oh, boy, middle of the day, <laughs> lunchtime. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. No, I can't imagine good. being in a. I can't imagine being in a classroom. <laughs> How to really run a city, everybody? Applause yeah. machine coming. That's something. <laughs> Well, thanks, guys. Uh, as usual, this has been uh, 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 fun and enlightening, and I think we we grappled with some important contemporary issues today. Which which uh, the, this this black vote thing uh, is perplexing and concerning, uh, but you've given me uh, a lot of stuff to to chew on. Um, so I can't thank you enough. As always, I have so much fun with you guys. Uh, that's it for this episode of How to Really Run a City. As always. If you have questions for the mayors, ideas you'd like to see us explore, or if you want to invite us to your town for an episode in conversation with your leadership, drop us a line at podcast at thephiladelphiacitizen.org. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and tell your friends about us because we really want to widen the conversation. Because by 2050, something like two thirds of the world will live in cities. And as cities go, so goes the nation, so goes the world. That's it for this time. We'll see you next time on how to really run a city.